Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Jaeger262 with an Armored Warfare review. Sorry, it's been a couple of days since this update actually came out. I think it's actually been a week. Uh, I've just been messing around with the new vehicles. They released an article on the K2 Black Panther. So, well, Black Panther 2, the K1A2. Korean main battle tank that's supposed to be at the tier 10 spot on this tree. That is the last in development article. Now we already knew that this was coming and they had already released a preliminary article on that vehicle, but this one shows 3D models and I will do a news video on that probably, but maybe not because we've already covered that vehicle and it was already had its own article. But the reason I brought that up is that while we only have two vehicles in the game right now and I have both of them, as you can see here is the Type 16 MCV, the tier seven Japanese tank destroyer, and then we have the Haramount Indonesian light tank right here. Both looking really good, both very fun to play. Uh, the Haramau plays a lot like a tier eight Stingray with none of the mobility or armor perks of the Stingray. And I know the Stingray doesn't have a lot of armor, but I'll get into that when we cover that video today. It's just on the Type 16. And also back to the Tier 10 Black Panther 2. Once we have that article, you're looking at maybe I mean, historically, it's been about maybe a couple of weeks to one month tops before the rest of this tech tree shows up. So hopefully by the end of March or beginning of April, we will see the completed tech tree beyond these two vehicles. But again, that is not a solid figure. I don't have the release dates on that. I've not talked to any developers. That's just my prediction, hoping for it, but we might not see those vehicles just like what, what, what happened with the French tech tree for many, many months. Um, they released a bunch of stuff about it. We never saw the second part of the French tech tree until three or four months after the initial release. Hopefully that won't happen here. Hopefully those vehicles are coming. But until they do, we have some really strong vehicles. And right now the Type 16 MCV is one of my absolute favorite tank destroyers in the game. And if you watch any of my old reviews, you'll re you remember I said that about the C-113 or the C-13, sorry, at tier six, this is the same deal. It is a brand new tank destroyer that just outshines every other tank destroyer in its tier. But that's not really saying a lot. And that's because I've seen a lot of other players talking about how this is pretty much the same as all other tier seven tank destroyers that are conventional weapons and not ATGMs. And the reason they say that is there's only one other tank destroyer at Tier 7 that uses a gun instead of an ATGM, and that is, of course, the Centauro. Which, to me, this still plays better than the Centauro, and I like it a lot more than the Centauro. But, beyond my opinion or the opinions of the other players I've been talking to, as always, to break it down, we have a comparison. And I placed it not only next to the Centauro 105, but I also have there the Security 2, and the ST1, and the reason for those two is I want a low tier, uh, I won't say DLC vehicles, but uh, not in the original game, we'll call them that, because these both were added afterwards, uh, at the low end of the spectrum and at the high end. And the reason I have the ST1 at the high end is because you'll notice right off the bat that the damage per shot of the ST-1 on Tier 8, which is a Chinese wheel tank destroyer, is the same as the Type 16, that's why I like it so much. You only get 453 with the Centauro. Penetration on the Centauro is again 530 millimeters with an impressive 550 on the Type 16, which beats even the ST-1. Now all these vehicles are pretty much going to beat the Tier 6, the Curry 2. Again, that's just here, just because there's not a lot of wheel tank destroyers in the game that are close to these tiers, I could have added the AMX-10 or even the LAV-600, I didn't want to do that. So pretty much just ignore, in fact, I'll just remove it. But it beats the tier eight and it has the same average damage as the tier eight. Now damage per minute is 5,500, which is of course gonna be lower than the ST-1 at tier eight. And that is because of its reload time, which is only 5.4 seconds between each shot. Not as fast as the ST-1, but much faster than the Centauro. And the Centauro has the worst DPM. Now, hit points, it also gets more hit points than both vehicles at 2,200. Its hull armor is 240, with side armor and rear armor matching the other two vehicles. 
It's only about five millimeters better than the other two. But the frontal armor of 240 is incredible for the hull. And that's because it's layered steel instead of just normal steel. And all that means is, not to get too technical, is literally what it sounds like. It's thin steel plates layered on top of each other to keep the vehicle light, but not compromise that armor value. And they're just basically stacked in the front. If you look at the 3D model, they kind of actually replicate it pretty well. So that's why this looks so blocky here. These are layered steel plates all up here and down here. Fun fact, didn't have to know that, but that's why it gets such great armor. Now it's turret armor, so it really shines. At the front, it's 530 millimeters thick. That is a insane amount more than the 80 millimeters you get on the Tier 8 ST1, and almost 400 more than what you see on the Centauro. So already, this is why, one, I put in the Tier 8, why I think this vehicle is so much better than the Centauro. In survivability, or what they call defense, it will go longer, harder, faster than the Centauro or the ST1 ever could. Max speed is the same as the other ones. I don't know why this one's at 99 instead of 100. Pretty much the same. It can't go as fast as the Centauro, but it's only 0.3 seconds off, so it's pretty comparable. It's heavier than both because of that armor buildup. But as far as mobility goes, all these are going to move about the same. ST1 being the slowest, but it's not important. Camouflage, it's better than the Centauro by 1% worse than the ST1 by 2%, really not a big difference there. It has the worst view range though, while on the move, than any of the other vehicles. Now that's only 10 meters less than the Centauro and 20 less than the ST1. Not gonna make or break the stats, but it is interesting to point out that the biggest bonuses, or I would say pros of this vehicle, are going to be the gun and the reload and the defense. Mobility is gonna be the same, um, camouflage about the same and view range about the same. Not too much worse, but certainly not better. Cannon gets 7.5 degrees of gun depression, better than Centauro or the ST1. It gets 20 degrees of elevation, Centauro gets an impressive 40. Why that is, I don't know, but I didn't know that until I just looked at it. So. Again, not too crazy. Min spread, 0 0.74. Same as, exactly the same as the Centauro. Worse than the ST1. Aim time is 1.65. That's incredible. Obviously, it matches the ST1 a little bit. Kind of worse. ST1 gets 1.5 seconds. Centauro gets 2.2. That makes a big difference. Even though the turret traverse on the Centauro is a really impressive 48 degrees, it doesn't come close to the 58 degrees per second of the ST1. And the 46 degrees that the Type 16 gets is not that much worse. So for better damage, more consistent reload, way better armor, and a better aim time, you're really sacrificing almost nothing in terms of mobility, camouflage, and turret traverse while playing the Type 16 to this Antaro. So there is just, in my opinion, and that's why I put, because it is just my opinion, and that's why I do these reviews, is what I think. But I wanted to show you guys the actual in-game stats. I don't have access to the hidden stats, but while we have the comparison in-game, the Type 16, in comparison, matches and stands up to the ST1 at Tier 8, and completely, again, this is just my opinion, it depends on what you care about more, if you like more mobility, more camouflage factor, and that kind of thing, then the Centauro is slightly better. But it just outshines the Centauro in every way, in my opinion. And that armor is absolutely impressive. And that is the first thing you're gonna notice about this vehicle when you play it, is that this armor is no joke, and neither is the hit points. It stays alive very long compared to other tank destroyers, and it even does better than the Harem. I played both, and this light tank dies a lot in battle. Obviously, no armor, very light, has a decent gun. This tank destroyer, does better than its tier 8 progression counterpart even though they're two different classes doing two different things it does way better than the centauro and i think it might even be better than the st1 i mean i've had the st1 for a very long time and this is just a really really good vehicle well it doesn't have all the impressive stats that the st1 does in certain categories it is well balanced in all of them but again you just can't beat that penetration value that damage value that damage per minute value 
or the armor. That armor, I mean, you're talking about right here because of the slope, 530 millimeters. I know I keep saying that, but this is as thick as some MBTs that you will be seeing in this vehicle. You see down to tier 5 and you do see up to tier 9. But 530 millimeters in the turret, that's a tier 5 main battle tank. And even some of the lighter main battle tanks at tier 6 will have the same turret armor as you. So this vehicle, again, I'm going to say it one last time, way better than the Centauro. Way more fun to play. And that's the last time I'll say it because now I'm going to get into some gameplay with this. And of course, the first gameplay I'm going to show you in this is the actual special operation for this new season. So we can get a playthrough of that. And then we'll take it in to fight some other players and see how well it holds up. But hands down, one of my favorite wheeled tank destroyers in the game right now. So let's get into some gameplay. Hey guys, so now we are loading into the first chapter. Um, Takahashi, person of interest. Takahashi is a small town in Okayamo. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, Japan, which is a fairly mountainous region of Japan. And like most of the recent Spec Ops or New Season maps, this is pretty elaborate. Not as elaborate as some of the um, We have received fresh intel that Littrell's in touch with local warbands. That's why we need to check not only the castle, but also both villages in the valley in order to capture him. And gentlemen, failure is not an option. Right, so to do what they just said, you'll see that what makes this map so dynamic is that you're going to twist and turn up mountains, and so you're going to need a lot of depression and a lot of... I don't want to say a lot of accuracy. You're going to have to pay attention to what's happening because enemies will attack you from below and from above you. It's actually really cool, it's really fun, but it makes vehicles like the Type 16 so great. And we have a Centauro to kind of compete with. Also, in this campaign, if you're not aware, they do have AI soldiers and support soldiers which will kill you. Like, at first, when it first came out, they didn't really do that much damage, or they didn't target you that much, I don't really know how to describe it. But I was playing at tier 8, it might be the tier difference, but they really, really hurt you. They do about 500 damage per hit, it's kind of crazy, so it's like getting hit by a tank. And they will just keep hitting you until you kill them, and it's kind of a waste of ammunition, so I can't stress this enough. It is important for MBTs who now have machine guns, this is why to enter in the support role. And as you can see, all these little chevrons here, those are people. And the Centauro, I don't know if you got hit by any of them, but they're trying to shoot them. You don't want to get hit by those guys. Right, We've entered the first village. There's only light resistance. Oop, sorry, I am sorry. Oh my god, everybody's in the Centauro. Oh. Here. Let's move on. I'm sorry, everybody. Land here and assume defensive position. Roger that. On my way. So, you're going to have to shoot this guy before he just completely pulls out. Um, I'm just going to let him pull out because he's going way too fast. I'm not going to expose myself. Got away. Oh, well. We'll deal with him another time. We do end up dealing with him. He's at the castle later. I don't know if you kill him now if that changes who you actually end up fighting at the castle. Should have gone in. You can already see that at least the depression's alright. But kinda hard on this particular map or mission to really land your shots. Damn, none of them are going through. This is not, there we go. Wow, that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. But uh that's part of what makes this mission so dynamic, and it keeps it interesting, obviously way more interesting than the just a normal PvE mission. Uh, they did an update today to kind of make these guys do less damage. Um, could you imagine, by the way, just getting hit by an 100 mm shell as a person? You're just get eviscerated like that. 
it's wild. Know, but anyway, I doubt he'll give us anything on um, Literal's one tough bastard. the thing about the update, to make them do less damage, we have to so I haven't been hit by a single guy yet. I, hope I, can I don't know if that's the because top. the update nerfed them successfully or just because I haven't gotten too close. They do have a limited range. That is the only good thing about the AI soldiers is they have a limited range. As you can see, they are launching border strikes way over there, uh, which means that even MVT's a machine doesn't really be able to do anything about them. Oh, that wasn't a mortar strike that hit you. And you can see I just blocked a missile or an ATGM from one of the um, soldiers. So yeah, you can kind of see how this rate of fire is already pretty great on this vehicle. This is supposed to be showcasing this vehicle. I'm getting caught up in the actual environmental aspect of this map. I just really like it. Um, also, when you get hit by these guys, it counts as environmental. Wow, my best. See, that's what I mean. They're so small, you will miss them sometimes, and it's just a waste of a target. What I would recommend doing in those situations, if you don't have a machine gun and you are trying to target soldiers, just bring a couple of HE rounds if your tank is compatible with them. Because at least high explosives, geez, the whole team is just... We are literally going to play into the hands of these artillery guys. Alright, so this is a really aggressive play that you should never ever make in the Type 16, ever. And the reason I made that is because my team was just getting way too cluster. So Yeah, I like the AI targeting system on this thing by the way. It's actually pretty great. I don't know if I've been able to show you guys that yet because I haven't really shot at any moving targets. But just like what I predicted, if the target's moving, even if you don't lock onto them, it gives you an aim reticle. So that way you can hit the moving target a little bit easier. Sorry about that, I keep wanting to see who's alive and who's not. I guess I could just look up in the corner. Looks like everybody's alive at full health, so I guess people respond. And my driver must be dead, or my wheels? I have a wheel out, I think, somewhere. They all look good. I don't know why I'm going... No, I do have a wheel out in the front. Alright. That's why I'm going so slow. And it won't enter the repair sequence for some reason. Oh wow, we're still going really slow. We should not be going this slow up this curve. I mean, it is pretty steep, but I mean, these tanks are beating us. All around, incredibly thick armor at the front. I mean, we're blocking ATGMs, heat rounds, HE rounds. Now, we're not blocking a whole bunch of them, but we are blocking them. So I'm trying to remember, there's an amp, well not really an ambush, but a battle coming up. I can't remember if it's right here or all the way up there. Um, it's right here. They already started hitting this T90. Oh. Alright, trying to use this thing's gun depression is kind of hard when you're attacking up slopes like this. Oh wow, see we almost just bit it. Um, and we blocked another round from an AT squad. It's got pretty great armor, and it's got a lot of hit points. If I was in the Centauro and sustained just the same number of hits and um, ricochets, I'd be dead. So that's something to consider when playing this vehicle or choosing which one you want to back. I would recommend this one. Like I said that yesterday, and it's still true today. Please don't do that. And the Centauro pushed me in harm's way, so we're just gonna respawn and stay away from that guy. Who is uh, now taking the full brunt of that attack on his own. Also, not 
I might do it too much, but I, just, I know I mentioned it a long, long time ago. That's been a part of this since the American Dream DLC. But uh, you can respawn. It does cost some credits, um, but in a game like this, you're going to be making about 100,000 credits. Enemy reinforcements are here, and there's a ton of them. Understood. Moving to assist. All right, pop smoke, but not for a ATGM hit me. Big ATGM. Identify. Target locked. Damn, he's not here either. Only the castle's left. Target eliminated. I am way out in the open now. This is exactly where I don't want to be. We're gonna die. We should not be here. I have no idea where my team is. But you can see that this reload is keeping us alive right now. I don't know where the AI... I guess because they're, they're too close or they're going too slow, but... The AI gun sight has not popped up yet. Um, unfortunately. They broke through. It is All passive though, so position. don't really worry about it. That means that it will come up on its own. You do have a special button. E will help you zero in on that and will make that AI reticle more prominent, but you don't have to waste that every time you want to see the AI sight. Oh, yeah, Osprey. Oh, ooh, I was not paying attention at all. But yeah, the rate of fire, the penetration on these rounds, um, we're just doing a lot of damage in it right now. Way more than I believe this Centauro. Oh, he died. That's unfortunate. How much damage did this Centauro do? He did 4,200. We're at about 13,000. That could be a lot of different factors. Um, I mean, it's not all the vehicles fall all the time. It could just be that he got into some sticky situations like we did when we respawned. Um, so, I didn't expect it to be that big of a difference. I did expect a really big difference, but not by almost 10,000 damage. However, that aside, just know that it's not straight up only because he was in the Centauro. But the Centauro cannot keep up with this thing. It just can't in terms of damage and eventually, because you're doing more damage, you'll be getting more kills, more kills, and more damage translates into more experience. Now this is the hardest part of the mission, especially for somebody in a light vehicle like this, because it's just a lot of AI guys all up on the hill and then you are basically assaulting up this hill to the castle under heavy fire. And we just took a hit by one of those guys. And we missed him. Why the BT-4 isn't using his um, machine gun on them and instead trying to hit them with his main cannon? I don't know. Blocked another one. Also, because of the way AI guys are balanced in this game, you are getting almost perma-spotted. I cannot hit that guy. If that AT guy can just get killed, I can move up. If nobody's killing him. Oh my god! Hold on, we're gonna switch to squash and see if we can just get some AT explosion on that guy. Or some splash damage on him or anything. Where did he go? Oh, it's over there. This VT4 absolutely needs to move up if we're going to have any chance at doing anything in this game. I'm going to load Squash again. Ah, oh, it was a mistake. I forgot I had Squash loaded. Alright, so that's going to be it for this game. I uh, have no idea what this team's going to do. It's two main battle tanks. They should have moved up. This really isn't that hard to beat. It is intimidating. They're both using their main guns against soldiers, wasting valuable ammo. And so that's one thing before I leave I will talk about. Don't get overwhelmed by this. It is more dynamic. It is interesting. And it's the first time we actually get AI soldiers in a mission. 
and they do kind of mess up or mess players up because they do real damage but they're not that hard use your machine guns and just kind of push through as if they were AFVs that's all you gotta do oh well hopefully we'll win but I don't think so because if they don't start pushing up now they're not gonna make it in time because there's a lot more tanks at the top so I'll play another game against players with the Type 16 and we'll see how well it does against actual players. Alrighty, so real quick before I get into the next game, just wanted to show you the post-game stats. We finished with 13,500 damage and 12 total kills, 7 assists, and spotted 11 vehicles. We only did 500 assist damage, but for a grand total in a losing game of 414 XP. So the VT4 did better by almost 1400, just about. Really carried us. Good job, Vlad7242. Really appreciated playing with you. Uh, the Centauro did not so great in damage, but again, I don't know if that's actually because it was the Centauro or player error, so it's not great for the comparison. But you saw, I respawned, I didn't hit all my shots, I bounced a lot off that leopard that were easy shots to miss, and I was still in a simple 10 minute game, able to get 13,000 damage out of it. So you really can't go wrong with this vehicle, and it is incredibly powerful for its tier, in my opinion. So we'll see how it goes against actual players. All right, so we're in global operations on Roughneck, bottom tier, but that shouldn't be a problem in this vehicle. Although I am experiencing a lot of lag and my FPS drops so bad, and I don't know why. All of a sudden, uh, this might be really hard to do with this kind of performance, but. Like I keep saying, the goal to play in this vehicle is going to be, well not the goal, but the perks are its speed and armor. The gun depression is nice, but speed and armor are really what's going to save you. So we're just going to move into this position, it's my favorite sniping position if you're playing on this side of the map, because you can shoot down onto three if I can just... Oh. This lag is going to be really hard to play through. Okay, so it looks like we got another Type 16 over there. Um, and it's not just speed in the actual movement category, it's going to be speed in all categories. Turret, traverse, gun reload, aim time, just absolute incredible speed. Something I don't think I showed off in the bot one is this radical. You see that white dot? Well, it's gone now. But that's the AI assist. Is It'll come up as a little white circle and you aim for that while a vehicle is moving and it's supposed to help you hit better targets. And now I was testing this before in a different game where it will do the same thing if you just lock on. And I know that that was something we already knew. But you don't just have to worry about that happening only in manual. If you just lock onto a target, it will lead the target automatically, which is pretty spectacular. And it does it pretty well. See, so we got a bunch of Type 16s up here. All trying to shoot the same targets. Company capture the mark location and we'll set up 80 pillboxes right oh, away. Disappear. Black company, airstrike is ready. Capture the mark location and we'll rain hell on them. We have captured point three. Unfortunately, that is something. It will lead the target even if it's behind cover. So unlike normal reticles which won't show you any information if a vehicle is behind cover, this does not apply for these vehicles. Or for this AI. So you will be able to see and lead vehicles even though they're behind cover. So that way once they break cover, 
you should still be able to hit them or even hit them if you fire the shot and nail it you'll hit them as they're just coming out of cover it's pretty cool I don't know if it'll work too well to be honest but we'll see he's already dead it's cause I'm losing some of my reload buff because I'm too close to my allies. But that's okay. Attention team, objectives have changed. New points are marked on the map. Nope. There's nobody out there spotting those guys. Just okay. Cause now I just have to watch point four or the four point, and then see any enemies coming through. Okay. And that's a bounce. All right, hit him for five twenty. Not bad. I do have the upgraded ammo for this unlocked, and I probably should have loaded that in before I started doing PvP, but this is just still part of the review, so stock, this is still a pretty powerful tank destroyer. Took a hit by a Bradley. That's never good. Alright, put one into the side, and we got spotted again. Don't want to get hit by that Bradley. Second time. Oh, he got hit by a kinetic weapon. I was like, why don't I recognize this? There he is. Alright, missed that last shot. See, even with the stock rounds, this thing's pretty great. And it's got good penetration value. So yeah, see what I mean about vehicles being behind cover? You're still getting that reticle. There's no way he's gonna break. Yeah, that whole whole thing is covered. All right, missed all the opportunities to lock on. All right, hit him for 450 and got him with that blind fire. We are on really low hit points now, but it's getting the job done, which is nice. Ugh. Hopefully nobody will come and challenge me, but I doubt that. I doubt I could be so lucky. Where do you want these AT teams? Black Company needs an ammo drop. Ready when you are. AT team has been deployed. So you've only done 3,700 damage. Not a lot. Um. But not terrible. I'm gonna try and go get repaired before the next phase. And just like you saw in the PVE game, even with its amazing mobility stats, it does not take extreme inclines well. I mean, no armored vehicle does, but I do think the Centauro might beat it there. Even though this thing has the best mobility out of all the wheel tank destroyers, it does not do that great in terms of um, actually scaling inclines, hills, anything like that on the map. But once you get up there, it's very fast, so shouldn't really be a factor. Well, not fast enough for me to get into position, but we'll see. Should take a few seconds here and then I'm gonna move over to probably the I-6 area ready to deploy. 
Don't know why I can't move. Okay, so it looks like I accidentally hit my targeting thing. Um, the target ability seems to have been changed. It's supposed to give you better accuracy with lower mobility. Um, but as you just saw, because I did an accident, now if you use the targeting perk, it gives you better accuracy but zero mobility, so it locks your vehicle in place. That's kind of ridiculous in my opinion, but I mean, if you're camping in a tank destroyer, it really doesn't matter, so. It's not too bad. Because you're not moving anyway. Um, this position works even better when people spot for you, but we'll see how that goes. Oh, just kidding, that's my fault. Everything is way out of my view range. I forget it's PvP, so the view range actually makes a difference. Whereas in PvE, your view range is unlimited. I should have been over here in the I3 position. Three clicks up from where I actually was. We have captured point six. I don't think that's going to do any damage, but we'll see. Yeah, so I'm going to relocate. This isn't really a great position. I'm going to go into the center and try to pop out at E4 without getting noticed by any MBTs, hopefully. And then just snipe across. I love the way this thing can snap onto a target de deadly fast. It's an amazingly strong tank destroyer, even with the lag and only 30 FPS, which is crazy low and crazy hard to play with. This thing is still performing really well in my opinion. It does not miss the shots that it takes regardless of where I am. Target. Wow. No pen. Of course, no pen. And he didn't pen me either, so... Armor. Always nice to have good armor on a tank destroyer, especially one like this. Just really don't want to get spotted while I'm out here. Alright, and I didn't. Nice. I'm just going to sit here and... Don't know where my shell went, um, but apparently didn't hit him somehow. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Enemies capturing point seven. Why would he? Why? Why would you even be back here? God, this guy's a jerk. Like there was no reason for him to be. Just bad position. Did not want to be there. Um, there was no reason for that Abrams to come after me, and he wanted that kill. Um, so I guess good for him. I don't know. <sighs> that sucks. I was really hoping not to respawn this game. Still gonna move back into that position, but this game's pretty much over. Um, okay. Well, now I'm at too much of an incline to make a difference. Waiting to see if any MBTs will cross over. They did. 
Um, but I, yeah, this game's over. It'll be over before I see any more enemies. Strike ready on your command. Blackbird, we need an airstrike. That's a miss. What a great shot. I got to set somebody on fire right before the game ended. Okay, take a look at the post game stats. It still loads. I don't know what's wrong with my connection all of a sudden that it just kind of like went out. Um, okay. Net match result 6100 damage. 12,000 experience that puts us almost at the bottom of the team in terms of experience earned. In terms of damage, again, middle of the team. Now, this guy did the best. I'm going to try to get another game where I don't have so much lag and I can actually play. Um, if I don't do that, you'll see this one. Either way, I don't think too much will change between a game that I can actually play uh, at full performance and one that's laggy. Just because, in my opinion, this is the greatest wheel tank destroyer in the game right now. I think it's better than... Well, actually, we did the comparison earlier. We know it's better than the Centauro. We know it's comparable to the ST1, which is a tier higher. And it blows, of course, anything at the lower tiers out of the water. So, I will try to play another game or try to figure out my internet connection. Uh, but if I don't... My final thoughts on this vehicle is that it is absolutely amazing, way worth it. If you've already gone through the C-13, just pick one up. It's going to be worth it. It's only 6 million credits, and it's the best wheel tank destroyer in Armored Warfare right now. Absolutely incredible. So please give this a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, or subscribe to the channel. and Hit the bell icon if you want to get notified when my next reviews go up. I will be reviewing, if you can see them. Here, the Haramau light tank and the Griffin 120mm battle path light tank um, in the future. And if I haven't done one already, I'm going to do a Sergeant York video as well because this is also one of my favorite AFVs in the game. So, subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified as that. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.